Now in our third section of the lecture topic assessment of hearing, we will talk about some audiometric tests. In this, we will talk about uh, pure tone audiometry, then speech audiometry and Bexi audiometry, and also impedance audiometry. Uh, pure tone audiometry is, uh, this is the audiometer uh, here, and then the patient is uh, sitting with the headphones on, so uh, we need the audiometer meter, and then the amount of intensity by for increasing and decreasing the sound is uh, in the control of the examiner, and they increase and decrease the intensity, the amount of intensity. And then we need the audiogram. Audiogram uh, will record the uh, uh, different uh, sounds when the patient will mention that they can hear the sound or they cannot hear the sound. So that's how the audiogram will uh, be uh, uh, will be seen. Like this is the frequency in hertz frequency of the sound in hertz and this is the hearing level hearing level or in decibel hear level is measured in the decibels so on one side of the uh, audiogram we will have the frequency uh, in hertz and it ranges from like 125 250 and then to 8000 and then we have the hearing uh, level in decibel it's from it ranges from 0 to about 120 so this for the then we have the um, air conduction uh, and then bone conduction these are the different right ear unmarked these symbols and then we have the right ear uh, for the bone conduction also so that's the audiogram and that's how the graphs we get when the patient hear or don't hear the sounds. So for pure tone audiometry. Threshold of bone conduction. So threshold. Threshold is the maximum level uh, at which threshold is the level at which the patient usually start hearing. That's the threshold. In speech audiometry, uh, the parameters of speech audiometry, we have the speech reception threshold and then speech discrimination score. For speech audiometry, the th two important parameters is the threshold or the point at which the patient hear the sound or speech. That's the speech reception or when they start receiving the uh, voice. And then st speech discrimination. Just start hearing is different from the discrimination of the speech. In discrimination, they actually start understanding the words and the speech. So it's the two different parameters of speech audiometry. In one, there is recognition, just the recognition, and in the other is the discrimination score. So here, uh, the different um, graphs are shown in which we have the A, this A is for the normal uh, score in which there is 100%. Um, uh, this uh, phonotic balance is normal or it's 100 at 30 decibel. At 30 decibel is 100. This is the normal uh, speech audiometry. Then if there is uh, conductive loss, what happens in conductive loss in B, uh, it's 100%, it's 100% at 70 decibels, and this curve runs parallel to that of the normal. So this is 100 
uh, at 30 decibel. 30 decibel. This in this conductive loss is 100 at 70 decibel and it runs parallel to the normal hearing. Then in graph C, if you see in patients who have sensory neural hearing loss, it's about 60 at 40 decibel. So is sensory neural is 70 decibel and then it attains a plateau here. At, it's at 70 it's maximum and then it attains a plateau here. And then here in this rollover curve, it's maximum at 80 decibel. This is the maximum at 80 decibel and it decreases in intensity further. So these are the comparison of four different type of uh, graphs. Whether it's normal, in normal it's 100% at 30 decibel. If patient has conductive loss, then the speech audiometry of conductive loss patient usually it's maximum at 70 decibel here. Then in sensory neural type of loss, it's maximum at 70 decibel, it's maximum at 70 decibels here, maximum at 70. This is the maximum here and then it attains a plateau, maximum at 70 decibel. And then in the fifth one, it's maximum at 80 decibel and it decreases as the intensity increases further. So this is the uh, comparison of speech audiometry of normal person with the conductive and sensory neural hearing loss. Next is speech discrimination score. Speech discrimination score. Speech discrimination is ability to understand speech and its relation to speech discrimination score. A list of 50 PB words. PB is phonetically balanced. Phonetically balanced word is presented and the number correctly heard is multiplied by two. That's how we get the speech discrimination score in which the patient is presented with 50 phonetically balanced PB is phonetically balanced words and they and the number they find correctly. If suppose out of 50 patient can tell clearly 30 words then 30 is multiplied by 2 which gives us 60. That's the uh, speech discrimination score. So if the score is 90 to 100, it's normal. 76 to 88 percent, slight difficulty. 60 to 74 percent, it's moderate difficulty. 40 to 58 percent, it's poor. And less than 40 is very very poor. So that's how the speech discrimination score is measured. Then in Bexi audiometry, if you see this is the stimulus level is the baseline and then the level decreases as the subject holds the button to indicate that they can hear the sound. So when the button is pressed by the patient, that's indication that they can hear the sound. That decreases the level uh, down. And then the level is increased. So down level is when they are hearing the sound and Increased level is when the patient is not pressing or when they are not hearing. So decreased level is when the push button is pressed and up is when the button is not 
first. So in Bexi audiometry, we have roughly about four or five types. In type one, in Bexi type one audiometry, the continuous and pulse tracing overlap seen in normal hearing or conductive hearing loss. So in Bexi audiometry type one, the continuous and pulse tracing overlap. So continuous and pulse, which have a break. Pulse is interrupted tracing and continuous tracing. They overlap. It's seen in conductive hearing loss or in normal people. Then in type 2 Bexi audiometry, the continuous and pulse tracing overlap up to 1000 hertz and then continuous tracing fall, seen in cochlear loss. So in continuous and pulse tracing, they overlap up to 1000 and then only and then continuous tracing falls and then only pulse tracing are present seen in cochlear loss. In type three, continuous tracings fall below the pulse tracing at 100 to 500 hertz, even up to 40 to 50 decibels seen in retrocochlear or neural lesions. In type 4, the continuous tracing falls below pulse lesions at frequencies up to 1000 Hz by more than 25 decibels. This is seen in retrocochlear or neural lesion. And in type 5, the continuous tracing is above the pulsed one seen in non-organic hearing loss. So Bexi audiometry is mainly for um, uh, cochlear, retrocochlear or neural type of losses and it uh, is uh, whether the continuous uh, uh, tracings are above or below the pulse tracing or uh, at what point uh, is it's above or below and at what frequencies. Then impedance audiometry. Impedance audiometry, in this we have the tympanometry and then acoustic reflux measurement. Two tympanometry uh, for the tympanic membrane and acoustic reflux measurement. In tympanometry, um, this is the, uh, we used uh, three type of like a probes. The A is um, uh, oscillator to produce a tone of 220 hertz. So this is an uh, oscillator which produce a to tone of 220 hertz. The B is the air pump to increase or decrease the pressure in the air canal. And C is the microphone to pick up and measure the sound pressure level reflected by the tympanic membrane. So how that's how the tympanometry is performed by three. Uh, A is for the uh, to produce the tone. B is to increase or decrease the pressure. Three is for the recording. Then the types of tympanogram, we have uh, A, this is the normal tympanogram. That's what the normal tympanogram looks like. The compliance of the tympanic membrane. This is the normal. AS, this is for the uh, shallow. AS is reduced compliance. And this is the AS is for the shallow tympanogram or for stiffness, so AS. Then AD is increased compliance. Here you see increase or deep. D is for, S is for shallow, D is for deep. This is the deep or uh, increased compliance. Then B here, this is the flat 
or dome shape. This is flat or dome shape uh, due to mainly due to fluid in the middle layer. Then we have the C. This is the maximum compliance at pressure more than 200, minus 200 millimeter water. So this is the negative pressure in the, and it is mainly due to eustachian tube obstruction. So this is the maximum compliance at the negative pressure, mainly due to tympanic membrane obstruction. So A is, that's how the normal tympanogram will look. This is the shallow, this is the deep or increased compliance, this is the flat or dome shape due to fluid, and this is the maximum compliance at the level of minus 200 millimeter of water. Then we have the acoustic reflex. Acoustic reflex is the test to test hearing in infants and young children and in the malingerers to detect cochlear pathology or abnormality in the cochlea, to detect eighth nerve lesion. Eighth nerve is the vestibulocochlear nerve, which carries the information to the brain or the auditory cortex. Acoustic reflux is the actually the reflux which cause the contraction. Acoustic reflux is also known as stapedius reflux. It's also known as middle ear muscle reflux and it causes the contraction of the muscles uh, as a result of uh, uh, very loud so uh, uh, sounds or when the patients start uh, vocalizing. So that's the acoustic reflux and it is the uh, it, it is used for the uh, uh, finding any uh, hearing loss or abnormality at the level of eighth cranial nerve which is vestibulocochlear nerve in the cochlea or, and also in the uh, auditory cortex or at the level of olivary superior olivary complex so test hearing in infants and young children in malingerers in cochlear to find any cochlear pathology eighth nerve lesion and lesion of the facial nerve facial nerve is the seventh cranial nerve and also lesions of the brain stem uh, volume of the ear canal so that was all about the uh, acoustic reflux and this was all about the section 3 also in which we talked in detail about the different audiometry tests. Thank you for watching scardia.com.